Together with nitrogen and phosphorus, potassium is a key element that is used in fertilizers as it is essential for plant growth. Fertilizers containing potassium are generally grouped under the name potash. Through this analysis, we review the fundamentals for potash, including the types, supply and demand factors, as well as pricing. There are several types of potash, however the two most common are muriate of potash or sulphate of potash, or more simply referred to as MOP or SOP. MOP is the most common form of potash and accounts for around 85% of global demand. It is a potassium chloride compound and is mainly used on crops such as wheat and other grains. Whereas SOP is a compound of potash sulphate and is the premium form of potash. And unlike MOP, SOP contains no chloride which can cause damage to certain crops, whilst it also contains sulphur, which is a key macronutrient and ideal for use in high value chloride sensitive crops such as fruit, vegetables, nuts and coffee. The majority of SOP is produced via two methods. The most common method is known as the Mannheim process. This process involves a secondary processing of MOP using sulfuric acid to produce SOP. This is however the more expensive method of production due to the high capital and operating costs. The other common method is brine extraction and this is how Australian Potash plans to produce SOP at their Lake Wells project. For this method to be considered, the project requires a number of unique characteristics. Fortunately, the Lake Wells project more than meets all of these essential characteristics. The major reserves and producers of potash are located in Canada, Northern Europe and Russia. However, like many other commodities, the future demand for SOP is driven by China. With predictions by 2020, China will consume around 50% of global supply. And it is for this reason Australian potash has begun negotiations with Chinese parties as they recently signed two non-binding MOUs with groups in the country. The demand in China is insatiable. I mean, what we've seen in China in the last 10 years, for example, is a potash industry that's going, grown from statistically immeasurable to being the largest potash producing nation in the world. They produce more potash in China, more sulphate of potash in China, than the rest of the world combined. That's how much they, they, they value the commodity. They are more likely to use sulphate of potash over the muriate of potash, and yet that's understandable given the rapid increase in the middle class demographic within China. As people become more wealthy, they demand different types of food. They demand better quality food. They demand more protein and more fresh fruit and vegetables and brighter coloured things. And that's where sulphate of potash comes into its own. It's instrumental in supplying that food market. Due to an oversupply in production, the MOP price has fallen to a low of around $200 per tonne. However, by comparison, the SOP price has remained relatively stable with a current premium of around $300 per tonne compared to the MOP price.